Hello everyone, welcome to the Vintage Model Company. Today we're building the KK Phantom Mite from the Vintage Model Company. This is a control line model. This aeroplane goes together in an altogether different way to the lighter free flight and micro RC aircraft that we also make. Starting the builds, you'll stretch the plan out over a board and tape it down. People were asking on the last video what we were using to protect the paper plan to stop parts sticking to it, and the answer is quite simple. All it is is baking paper found in the kitchen drawer. Once this has been taped on top, you'll be ready to start the first part of the fuselage. I like to remove most of the parts on the laser cut sheets on simple one day builds like this one, but it's up to you. Just make sure not to lose anything. Two engine bearers need to be cut for this model. A normal hacksaw can be used, but I decided to make use of the workshop bandsaw. These engine bearers can be next glued to a plate that makes up the cockpit floor. At this stage, the plan suggests that you bend the wire for the undercarriage. Be careful with this, it's easy to injure yourself if the wire flicks back and stabs you in the finger. The next bit of the build is to add the fuselage sides. I use super glue for haste whilst filming this build video, but you can use more traditional cement or wood glue if you are so inclined. The super thick balsa blocks are next to be glued to the fuselage to make up the turtle decks. As you might imagine, these need a lot of sanding. Use coarse sandpaper, something like 140 grit, to start with before moving on to some finer stuff. Take your time and try not to take too much off. Establish a nice curve to each piece that you can make symmetrical on both sides. When you're happy, you can set the fuselage aside and shape the tail surfaces. These need a little smoothing around the edges, but that's about it. The horizontal stabiliser needs the trailing edge sanded down a little more to allow the elevator to move up and down. The rudder is fixed at an angle noted on the plan, which helps it to fly properly when tethered to control line cables. At this point, I glued the nose underside to the fuselage and shaped it with yet more sanding. This doesn't take as long as you might imagine, and it's quite satisfying when you achieve a nice smooth finish. Moving on to the wings, this is where the sanding gets a little more intense. Keep your wing flat against the table and establish leading and trailing edges. The training edge will need a lot more material taking off than the front, so again make sure to use coarse sandpaper. Whatever you do though, make sure not to make two of the same wings. Ensure that you sand the top side of the left wing and the top side of the right wing. It's all too easy to accidentally make two of the same by sanding the wrong side. When you've got your wings sanded and looking very similar, you can use the plywood spars to attach them together. These establish some dihedral, although you'll need to sand the wing root of one of the wings to achieve a nice fit. Glue them together securely and you'll have one sturdy set of wings for your nearly complete control line aircraft. I won't go into all the setting up of the control line gear and control system inside the plane, at least in this video. This one is more about the airframe building techniques. Comment down below with suggestions for power systems that I could add in future episodes to this aircraft. We could add a brushless electric setup for a more round the pole type game, or a more conventional gas engine. Let us know what you want to see. Mylar hinges are probably the best way to let your elevator, the only movable control surface on this aircraft, actuate freely. Cut pieces to length and then splice them into the wood, carefully ensuring that you don't split the balsa wide open. We'll do a video on this subject in the future.
With that, the airframe is pretty much done and just needs some control line hardware, paint and an engine. For now, this model only requires some sand and seal to seal the balsa, a coat of primer and some brightly coloured paint. Here's how it all turned out. Thanks very much for watching this Vintage Model Company video. Comment down below on which builds you would like to see us do next time and check out the links in the description. See you on the next one.